This past weekend, we have decluttered over 600 items from our home. We have been on this journey to minimalism for over six months now, and it still surprises me how much stuff I find to declutter every single time I do this. As I'm going on this decluttering process, I am finding that it's getting easier, and I feel like my decision-making muscle is getting stronger. It's getting easier for me to get rid of stuff, to say, no, I actually don't need that. No, I don't need to have all of these just-in-case items in my home that are keeping up you know, my space cluttered and my mind cluttered as well. I actually read a study that said the amount of stress that us women feel is directly proportional to the amount of stuff that we have in our homes. And it made so much sense to me because I felt like I was constantly getting overwhelmed by the state of my home. And it was tidy on the surface because I was constantly trying to keep on top of it but that effort of trying to keep on top of it was getting way too much for me I was feeling really overwhelmed I was also about to have another baby which my baby is now six months old and I just felt like you know if I'm overwhelmed now before having a baby I can only imagine how I'm going to feel after I have a baby and that's kind of what brought on this minimalism journey for me because I am in this really busy season of life and I don't want to spend all of my time cleaning and tidying and taking care of my home. Of course, you do have to do certain chores, right, to keep on top of it and to keep it looking nice. But I don't want to be spending all of my time doing that. I want to be spending time with my family, with my children, and I just want to feel less stressed in my home. I want to enjoy it more. And yeah, I hope through these videos that I'm making on decluttering and minimalism, I hope I will help you do the same and kind of take you along for the journey. Maybe we can declutter together and get our homes in more of a calm state together. So first of all, for paperwork, I got rid of probably around 200 pieces of paper. Now, I haven't counted like piece by piece, but that's how much I would estimate it was, maybe even more. But we keep so many papers, like I had appointment letters from when I was pregnant, I had from when I was, like before I was pregnant, I had pregnancy, you know, leaflets, I had a letter that we got from the government, which everybody got when COVID started. We had just so many little papers that we do not need to keep. Like there's so little amount of paperwork that you actually need to keep a physical copy of. For some things, I actually took a digital photo you can uh, scan them on your phone as well and keep them maybe on dropbox or google photos or something like that you don't need to keep a physical copy of every little paper you own of course some things are important like you know passports and things like that things that you actually need you know the physical copy of but for the most part you do not need all of that paperwork and i actually managed to get rid of a lot of paperwork and i could fit all the things that we need for us, like I labeled them for each person in our family and then also things for the house, things for the car and that all fit in this one file, like one folder and that's it. That's all the paperwork that we have at the moment. And I cannot tell you how freeing that feels to not have huge stacks of paperwork all around the house. Like if I need a piece of paperwork, I know exactly where to go in this folder to find it. It's way less stressful. It doesn't take up my, you know, space in our home. And yeah, it just feels amazing. So I would highly encourage you to go through your paperwork. Just go a little bit at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself and, you know, get rid of anything you don't need. Things that didn't have any sensitive information, I just straight away put them in the recycling. And the things that did have sensitive information, you can either take them to um, one of those shredding places. You don't need to buy a shredder to have at home. Um, you know, it can just be an extra appliance or like gadget to have to uh, maintain and I just don't want to get that for us in our home so what I do with the sensitive information is I just rip them to shreds by hand and put them in the bin and then that's it then I also went through Sophie my uh, baby's wardrobe or actually wardrobe it's just a chest of drawers these are all of her clothes actually she doesn't have that many because she doesn't need that many um and I went through them just quickly to take out anything that you know she's not fitting into anymore and I got rid of about 20 baby clothes I would say from here um, I did order you know the next size up for her on Vinted I get a lot of my baby clothes um, but I try to keep it minimal I don't need a huge amount of stack of baby clothes um, and yeah that's just kind of how I handle this um, for my kids wardrobe I will do a separate video on the kids wardrobe because I have been getting a lot of questions about that 
Um, let me know what you think, but yeah, I think I'll do a separate video on that. Next, I went to Bath Toys. I wanted to get rid of some toys from here that were annoying me. Like for example, these letters that we have, right? Like letters and numbers from, I think Munchkin. And here's the thing with these. My son never really asks for those to play with in the bath. It's just if he sees them, he wants all of them in the bath with him. But he doesn't actually play with them. He just wants them there. And so I took them away and I actually put them in like a quarantine bin, right? I wanted to put them away, see if he's asking for them and then maybe bring them back if he really, really wants them. But he hasn't actually even noticed that they're gone because he didn't really care about them. And they were such a pain to, you know, just kind of get out of the bath after his bath, dry them, put them back because they're so tiny and so many of them. So that's what our toy, like bath toys look like. It's so much better now. Yeah, so that was about 30 bath toys. Then moving into the bedroom, I actually wanted to go through my kind of makeup, beauty um, items in here. I have minimized this so much, um, but I did go through this a bit more and I just took out about 10 products that I just know I'm not using and I'm probably never going to use or not very much anyway. So it's not worth keeping duplicates. It's not worth keeping um, so many items in there. I also read another study that said um, that getting rid of clutter eliminates 40% of housework in the average home. How insane is that? Like 40% less time you're spending doing chores and cleaning and laundry and all of these things simply by getting rid of the items that we don't actually need that are not actually bringing any value to our life. And I believe it was Joshua Becker, which is a famous minimalist, um, who said that having less stuff is better than organizing more. And I think that's so true because I was constantly looking for new ways to kind of have, you know, nice storage system or new baskets for storing things or organizing my stuff in a different way. But I wasn't actually getting rid of much. And so I was just moving clutter from one basket to another thinking I've organized and constantly trying to do that and just never feeling satisfied with it. And also um, never, it was never really long lasting. It would always get in that overwhelming mess um, very soon after I've done that organize with me. And I do find that pretty much every little thing that we have and that we own in our home requires a tiny bit of your time. And of course, every little thing is tiny, but then the more you have, the more um, of your time it's going to take and there's actually this saying um i've heard this a lot back in romania when i was growing up and i think it's probably from the fact that you know it was kind of up after communism so a lot of people were you know gathering resources and trying to keep things just in case because obviously they had this scarcity mindset right like you might not know when you're going to get this thing or when you're going to be able to buy this thing again and so growing up, I heard a lot of that, you know, you should keep things because you might need them and they might be useful and you just need to hold on to them just in case. But the thing is, you know, the age that we live in right now, you can get things like, you know, on Amazon or any other platform, you can get things the next day to your door. You can hop to the shop really quick and get anything that you could possibly need. Um, and it's just we have an abundance of resources available to us all the time. Of course, it depends on, you know, where you live in the world and what your situation is. But for the most part, we have everything available to us and we do not need to keep all of this clutter into our homes um, just in case. And the saying that I grew up with that I heard a lot was that, you know, you need to have that stuff just in case because it doesn't require to be fat or it went something like that. It might not make a lot of sense in English, but that's kind of it. Like, you know, the clutter is okay to have or all of these things are okay to have because they don't require to be fat, right? Like they don't require your attention and you just keep them there. But the thing is, they do require your attention. Maybe not right now, but they will down the line. Like if you have a garage full of stuff, no judgment whatsoever, because we were in that point too, that, that stuff is going to require your time at some point. You're going to have to declutter. You're going to have to move things around. Maybe if you move house, you're going to have to deal with all of that. Maybe you're going to look for something and you're not going to be able to find it under the clutter. And it's going to take up your time to look through it all. Or we actually had this happen to us where we spent hours on a weekend or a few weekends actually, because it's happened multiple times where you find things that all of a sudden got damp, maybe over winter, like in the garage or our shed. Um, it had a bit of flooding. And so all the things that were on the floor of the shed got ruined. We had to take everything out, obviously toss things away because they were in no good condition anymore. 
um, some things got moldy, um, you had to clean the floor properly, and it just takes up more of your time each time you have to deal with all of these things. While you're doing this declutter, I highly recommend taking, you know, this kind of basket with you or a box or whatever you have on hand, a, a bin bag, just to have a place to put everything as you're decluttering around the home. Um, and, you know, I started kind of small here, but it actually piled up so much in the end. Um, next up, I moved into my son's craft bin. Now, here's the funny thing. I have this huge white basket up here. I've actually decluttered this in the past, but I have decided to go even more minimal with this. I hate this craft basket because for one, it's super heavy. I keep it up there because I didn't want him to take out everything at once, like all the little bits in there. But whenever he asks for something like to do a craft, like have some Play-Doh or anything like that, I kind of dread it because I know he will take out all of these tiny things and it's just so hard for me to clean up after. And obviously it's really overwhelming for him. He can't do it on his own, like the tidy up. And so I thought, how about I take everything out, keep a few Play-Dohs, one paint set because we had two. Um, because of the huge clutter we had, I actually forgot where we put one of them. I couldn't find it anymore. And I bought another one and then I found the, you know, the previous one as well. So we have two. And that's kind of what happens with clutter. You forget where you put things, you can't find them and you end up purchasing more and more and just wasting money basically. So I went through this bin and I only kept a few things. We have four Play-Dohs I kept a um, mat uh, like a white tablecloth that I put on the table when he does crafts and painting I kept one painting set this folder like the black folder where we keep some of his artwork and I have two cups for water for when he's doing painting and that's it everything else that was in this bin went either in donations or recycling or in the bin and I got rid of about 60 items from this craft bin and yeah, my son hasn't even noticed. He hasn't asked for them. Um, it, in fact, it's actually encouraged him to play with Play-Doh a bit more and um, kind of, you know, get more creative with it because it's now on hand um, here underneath like our little dining bench that we have. And I'm also more inclined myself to get those out for him to play with um, because it's not overwhelming to tidy up. It only takes like two minutes to tidy up at the end. It doesn't have to be so many little pieces for him to enjoy um, an activity like this. Next up, I went under our TV here in this storage area. I have this camera. It's a bigger Nikon camera that I haven't used in so long. Sometimes we will take a few nice pictures with it, but that's maybe like once or twice a year. And I have this other camera that I'm vlogging on, right? This um, Canon camera that I usually use for all of my content, for all the work that I have to do. And so I've been kind of going back and forth between keeping this bigger camera or getting rid of it because realistically we don't really use it that much. And for anything that we do use it, I can use my main little camera that I have. It does the um, job perfectly. And I decided, yeah, I'm actually just gonna get rid of the bigger one because I don't need it. I don't use it very much. It's just taking up space. It's adding to the clutter. And, you know, I'm kind of hogging this resource, right? This camera that somebody else, like maybe a photographer, could really use and get a lot of use out of it when it's just gathering dust in my drawer here. Now, it's a, an older camera. I wasn't sure if it's worth much anymore, but actually we ended up putting it on eBay and we got 250 pounds from it. 250 pounds from something that I wasn't using and was just cluttering up my space. We have been selling our clutter quite a bit lately. Let me know if you guys would like to see a video on tips, how to sell your stuff and how to get rid of things easier um, and where to sell them and how do you do all of that. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. But yeah, this camera had to go um, and it was about five items that I got rid of here that I decluttered with the, you know, the cord and the charger and things like that. And then I also went under the TV uh, in these baskets that had lots of like knickknacks and papers and things like that. And I decluttered about 10 items from this, I would say. Then moving on to my wardrobe, like I cannot believe how many items I still have in my wardrobe. I just did a video recently on how I got rid of about 80% of my closet. And then I look in my closet and I still see so much. Um, and I, these were all items that are kind of out of season right now. They're the autumn winter bits. And I haven't gone through these in a little while. So I just wanted to go through them again with fresh eyes now that I've kind of 
you know, developed my declutter muscle a little bit more. And I really, really realistically asked myself if I'm actually going to wear these. And if not, if I kind of didn't like how they look anymore, like these days, if I haven't worn them in a long time, then they just had to go. And honestly, I, I counted and I got rid of over a hundred pieces of clothing. Like that's insane. And you would think, oh, now your wardrobe looks really bare. No, it actually doesn't. It, there's still stuff in there. There's lots of items I can still wear. And you know how they say you wear like 20% of the items that you have for 80% of the time. That was really true for me. And I feel like now I'm getting close to having just that 20% or even less. But before it was just insane in there. So all of these big bags that you see here are the paper clutter and then also um, the wardrobe items that I took out. Then I went into the kitchen and I got rid of five items in there. So first of all, I got rid of this tea um, like canister thing. We use the coffee and sugar one. We barely use the tea one because I have the teas displayed here um, in their boxes. I don't usually take them out because it's easier to find them if they're just in the boxes. So I got rid of that. I got rid of this hair tool that I, I have a duplicate now because I purchased another one. It was really old. I got rid of this lighter thing because we have two. I don't need two. And I got rid of this sandwich toaster, which I barely, barely use. And then to the items decluttered, I also have this uh, black bin bag that is full of toys that I've put in the out box. So what this means is I just went through my son's toys like... Every once in a while when I would pass the toys or I would just see them in his baskets, I would take things out that I thought, no, I know he's not playing with this. I know he hasn't touched this in a while. I would just take it out and put it in an outbox, which is just a place where I put things that I know need to leave our home. So I have been gathering all of these things for a while now and there were over a hundred toys in there, like little knickknacks, random puzzle pieces that he's not playing with anymore. All of those things just had to go. And then I also went through books and really decided, you know, if I'm actually going to read this again, because sometimes you read a book and you think, oh, that was really good. Um, and you feel like you need to keep it, you know, to show it to friends when they come over or something like that. But if I'm not going to read it again, I don't really need to keep it. Um, and if I do decide I want to read it again, I can always, you know, borrow it from the library or something like that. And then we have so many children's books that you know we've read and he's not interested in anymore and it's just like they're so heavy they're so you know they take up so much space there's no point in keeping that many we have two of these how did we end up with two of these i think you got them as a gift i know no no we put one up for somebody else because we don't need that's to. a good idea and we have this one too that's a different one isn't it yeah so these are the books that we kept. He still has a few, you know, quite a few to pick from when we read um, to him at night. And I got rid of about 15 books or more. Um, I got rid of my cookbooks as well because realistically I do like, I liked kind of having them and sometimes browsing through them, but I rarely cooked anything from them because they sometimes require ingredients I don't have or they just take a lot of effort and I'm all about simple meals these days. And with the books we no longer need, I actually found Ziffit.com very, very useful. So what you do is you go on their app, you scan the code of each book that you want to send to them, and then you pack all the books in a box, leave it outside on your porch, um, and then somebody will come and collect it. Um, obviously you can schedule what day you want them to come and collect it. And it's really easy to do this, and you actually get a bit of money for it as well. Well, like for these 15 books we got 12 pounds which is not a lot but you know it's more than nothing it's more than keeping that clutter in your home and I will also put a referral link for you um, I, I'm not sponsored by them in any way but you do get a bit of extra something I believe um, if you go through my referral link so that will be linked in the description box but yeah I found as if it's really helpful to kind of get rid of books really quickly get them out of the house and make a little something for them as well so I do hope you have found this helpful. I can't believe we got rid of 600 items, even after the, I've decluttered for months and months, but I still find items that I can get rid of. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope you're having a lovely day. Keep on decluttering if you're on this journey with me. And yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.